Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. First off, I wanted to apologize if this video comes off a little bit echoey. I just moved into a new house and, uh, well, it's kind of empty right now. So, sorry about that, but hopefully this comes out nice and clear. Um, but today, there's going to be two parts. Uh, I'm going to be making two videos. The first part, I'm going to be going over basically the last 10 or so years of GPU history and how that has kind of shaped to where I am now. Currently, I'm using a GTX uh, 970, and I've been a pretty big proponent of both AMD slash ATI and NVIDIA over the years. You know, each generation, one GPU manufacturer generally was a little bit better than the other, and usually that was the direction that I went. Ever since Pascal launched, though, I've been really, really hard on NVIDIA, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and I wanted to kind of simplify it and try to make it make sense to you guys. What I did find kind of interesting is with all the new Vega news coming out, the information that I collected really relates very well. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the second video. But if you guys have watched our channel, you guys would have, will know that Joe and I were both very excited for the GTX 1080 and 1070 before they launched. In fact, our third video was basically me saying that people needed to be aware of their CPU limitations before buying such powerful GPUs because we were very excited for them and we wanted to make sure that you guys, the viewers, were prepared for to utilize them fully. Now, over time, things have changed. Doing this channel, I'm into the news and following things a lot heavier than, you know, just a normal person would. And it was really hard for me to kind of put things into words other than the fact that business practices from Nvidia just are not good. And I wanted to go ahead and put that into a chart, something visual that will demonstrate this very clearly and succinctly. And like I said, it actually turned into some very interesting data that I've come up to uh, with possibly leading to Vega. So let's go ahead and check out this chart that I keep mentioning and I will go over that with you. So let's go ahead and start with the GTX 280. So this uh, GPU launched all the way back in 2008, June 2008. Now. The big thing here is, is if you're looking at just the NVIDIA GPUs, you can see a clear trend in the die size. Now, this was disrupted, obviously, with the GTX 680. The 280 started at 576 millimeters squared, followed by the 480 at 429 millimeters squared, the 580 at 520 millimeters squared. So these were very, very large GPUs. Back then, that's what NVIDIA did. They produced the largest GPU they possibly could, and that's why they were able to maintain the performance crown. If you now look down under the uh, HD 4870, HD 5870, and the HD 6970, you can see the die size on those GPUs were much, much smaller. Now, the big reason why the GTX 1080 and the HD 4870 is such a big deal is because that was probably the turning point that has shaped the GPU market today. ATI at the time decided not to go ahead and compete in the super high-end market. They did not want to be building 576 millimeter squared GPUs. They're very expensive. You have to charge a lot of money to recoup your, your profits off of that. Instead, they focused on the more mainstream segment with the 4870 at only 256 millimeter squared, coming in at only 44% of the size of the NVIDIA GPU. So with the NVIDIA GPU being 64% larger, that is a huge hit on margins. That means ATI could produce two, more than two, HD 4870s for the same price that NVIDIA could produce the GTX 280. Now that is reflected in the launch price. The launch price of the GTX 280 was the first time that a top tier GPU was released at $649. Generally, $499 up until that point, and as you can see even afterwards, was considered the top of the line price point for a launch GPU. But due to the sheer size of this graphics card, they had to go ahead and recover money somehow and getting it from consumers was the only way to do it. Now, if we look back at the 4870, it launched at only 299. So it's less than half the size, it's less than half the price. That makes a lot of sense. The big thing is, is if you look at the performance difference, yes, the GTX 280 was significantly faster but it was not twice as fast. It was only 24% faster than the AMD card. So we're looking at a GPU that is less than half the size, costs less than half as much, and is only 24% slower. This is the main reason why I 
chose to purchase a 4870 back then myself. AMD's, or ATI's technology rather, excuse me, was vastly superior to NVIDIA's at the time. Now granted, the previous generation, ATI had a hard time dealing with the GTX, uh, or the 8800 GTX. Now, that was kind of a troubling time for them, and that is the reason why they wanted to step out of the high-end market. They wanted to just focus on the mainstream. However, they hit a home run with their architecture that NVIDIA could not match. Now, if we move over to the 480, we're still looking at a huge GPU at 529 millimeters squared. You know, we're still, uh, we're actually up to 250 watt TDP, which for NVIDIA, that is the maximum uh, that they have released a GPU at, at least a gaming level GPU. But now compared to the HD uh, 5870, first off, the GTX 480 launched approximately six months later. Uh, so ATI was ahead of them. And even still, they had to produce such a large chip. ATI still got away with a 334 millimeter squared GPU performing against NVIDIA's 529 millimeter squared GPU. Now, if we look at the performance difference, NVIDIA still had the lead. They did have the throne. Granted, this time the lead was shrunk down to only 14%, but they were still technically the performance king. We jump over to the 580. After NVIDIA got their Fermi architecture fixed, they were able to shrink down the die a little bit and bring TDP down just a smidge, still remaining at the 499 mark. And then compared to the ATI 6970, which is now growing. See, NVIDIA started going down in size and ATI was starting to go up. The performance difference is about the same as before. Price difference is still about the same, about 20, 25% lower. Now we move on to the GTX 680. This is where things change. This is where NVIDIA learned from the HD 4870. Go smaller, go more efficient, and make more money. Now at only 294 millimeters squared, we were looking at 1% slower, so this is margin of error, than ATIs, or AMDs I believe at this point, HD 7970, and that was at 352 millimeters squared. So we're not talking about a huge difference in die size, but clearly Nvidia finally had the technological superiority. Now AMD did launch their GPU first and did command a slightly higher launch price at 549, whereas the GTX 680 had to come out at 499, as clearly it was not superior to the HD 7970, but it was close enough to where they could go ahead and just cut down to 499 and be just fine. Because if you look to just the previous generation, the GTX 580, you're looking at about 40% smaller GPU commanding the exact same price, which means you're looking at 40% more profits for each one sold. This trend did not continue with the GTX 780, which they did bump up to 561 millimeters squared, which now this is the second largest GPU that they have produced next to the GTX 280. This GPU was in response to the fact that there was kind of an open market. The Titan, the GTX Titan was out, but that was $1,000. And back then people didn't spend $1,000 on GPUs. So they went ahead and released the 780 to once and for all take the performance crown away from AMD because they did have the 7970 gigahertz edition, which is about 15% faster than the GTX 680. So there was some competition there. So they did have to go ahead and release a big GPU to retake the throne once again. Now, AMD kind of followed suit this time. They went ahead and launched a very large GPU for the very first time with the R9 290X. This GPU at 438 millimeters squared is still 78% of the size of the GTX 780. So it's still smaller and performance wise, it was actually faster. This is the first time AMD really had a substantial lead over an Nvidia card. Looking at the launch price of 549 versus 649, the AMD card really just kind of wiped the floor with the GTX 780, which then led to the GTX 780 Ti being released. Now moving on to the GTX 980, this launched in uh, June of 2015. This was another smaller GPU, not quite as small as the 680. We're still looking at 398 millimeters squared, so it's still reasonably large in size. Launching at 549, now its main competitor was obviously the R9 Fury X, which also launched in June 2015. Now, this is probably where AMD really faltered. 
As I said, the R9 290X was the first really kind of big-ish GPU, you know, 400 millimeter or greater GPU that they have produced. Regardless, they went for, they went all out on this one, 596 millimeters squared. This thing was a monster. Even with that being 150% larger and commanding more than 100 watts more on TDP and launching $100 more than its NVIDIA counterpart, it ended up only being about 5% faster. NVIDIA had an 18.2% price difference for 5% performance. Now, clearly there was something wrong here. There was obviously the, the just make it bigger approach did not work for AMD. So what's happened here lately, as you can see, the GTX 1080, there's no competitor. And then the GTX 1080 Ti, which just released, there's clearly no competitor right now either. Um, will Vega 11 compete with the 1080? Vega 10 with the 1080 Ti? That's speculation, and I'll leave that for my next video. But here, now that I've gone through all the numbers, I want to go ahead and kind of point something out to you if you haven't noticed it already. So NVIDIA was charging, trying to charge 649 for a very large GPU, very expensive. Okay, that kind of makes sense. It costs a lot of money, especially with defects. You're not getting a lot of dies per wafer. You know, the GTX 280 at 649, it was understandable, but nobody was paying that back then. It was not worth it. Nobody thought that that was a reasonable price for that particular GPU, not for its performance. So with the GTX 480, they went back in line. You know, 499, that has been kind of the staple for high-end GPUs for pretty much since the high-end gaming GPU market even existed. Same thing continued with the 580 and even the 680. But the big difference is we're looking at a 520 millimeter GPU versus a 294 millimeter GPU. We're looking at a much smaller GPU commanding the exact same price. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, the performance was really good. So, you know, it, it's totally worth it, right? Well, not really. When it's competing against a 352 millimeter uh, AMD GPU and losing. I mean, this, this is when NVIDIA slipped. They actually lost the performance crown here. They're tied or negative a little bit here, and they're commanding the same exact price point. That just doesn't make sense, not, not from a consumer. Why is this GPU 499? And meanwhile, you know, the much bigger, the top tier GPU last generation cost the exact same amount of money. Now you move over to the GTX 780 and you see the knee-jerk reaction by NVIDIA, which is to take back the performance crown, which they didn't, but you know, they definitely took it away from the 7970, but you know, they released this giant GPU, still at only 649, which isn't terrible, and shortly thereafter reduced down to 499, to match up with the other ones. Sounds kind of familiar with their current tactics, but with this GPU, you were getting the largest, most powerful chip that Nvidia could produce. Whereas the GTX 680 was not the most powerful uh, Kepler GPU that they could produce. You go onto the 980, it's kind of the same thing. Obviously, because there's the 980 Ti, clearly for 549, you're not getting the same level of performance. You're not getting that top tier, tier one performance that you were in previous generations. Now, this really wasn't that big of a deal because 549, sure, it's a 400 millimeter square GPU, so it is smaller. It's still less than the 780. Regardless, the performance was good enough that people really weren't too upset. It's only $50 more than the 680 or 580. That was acceptable, and most people were pretty okay with that. Now, this is where the real issue comes in, is when you look at the GTX 1080. Now we're jumping from 549 to 699 Yes, I'm quoting the Founders Edition price because that's what they cost. When the GPU launched, if you wanted one, you were spending $699 for a 314 millimeter squared GPU. This is a very small, cheap-to-produce GPU, and they're commanding a higher price than they did on their 561 millimeter squared GPU and their 576 millimeter squared GPU. They only wanted 649 for those. Now, if you look over at the 1080 Ti, some 10 months later, you're looking at a 471 millimeter squared GPU at the exact same price of 699. This, my friends, unfortunately, is just sheer price gouging. I'm sorry if that came off a little herky-jerky uh, with the echo in here. It's kind of throwing me off a little bit, but. Hopefully you guys see my point. You know, they were selling top tier big GPUs, the best of the best for 500, between 500 and $650. You know, these were the best that Nvidia could produce and they usually launched those first and followed up with cut down versions and smaller models later on. Now their business model is, is to launch a small GPU for a lot of money 
and then release big GPUs for, you know, $1,200, you know, basically what they should be launching for, let's, let's say we even capitulate and said 649. Okay, let's just throw our hands up and say, okay, NVIDIA, you guys have been wanting that 649 price tag for a while. Uh, they didn't get it with the 280. They sure as hell didn't really get it with the 780 because there was a lot of competition there. This time around, they got it. And the main reason why that is, is because there was no competition. Now, why was there no competition? Why was NVIDIA able to catch up? They were so far behind technologically. The HD 4870, 5870, 6870, all the way up to the R9 290 was technologically superior to anything NVIDIA had at the time. The key there is they hit, they struck gold. Basically, they had their 4870 moment with the Maxwell architecture. Now, that has been their saving grace. Basically, Pascal was just the evolution of Maxwell. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, when you strike gold, you don't just throw it away. You utilize it. This is the same thing that Intel does with their CPUs. But the problem is, is they're really milking the market now and taking advantage of you, me, anybody else who buys their products by not providing their best solutions first. Now, had they launched the GTX 1080 Ti at 699 launch day and actually launched the 1080 at its MSRP at 599, and so on and so forth, I don't think anybody would have too much of an issue there. Now, the mainstream market, for example, I have the GTX 970. This card launched, you know, just 18 months earlier at $330. Now, the GTX 1070 launched at $450. We're talking about a smaller die, which means cheaper, costing more money. I mean, a lot more money. We're, we're not talking about just a little bump. You know, had they charged $350, maybe that was MSRP, and it actually launched at that price tag. I think that'd been all right. But they they just went they went for it, basically. And people gobbled it up. And that, that just blows my mind. So it's not so much that I don't really like NVIDIA products. I do. I have one. And it's great. And it runs fantastic. Uh, the Pascal cards are very good. They just are not worth the money, not what they used to be. Because if you notice now, the uh, GTX 1070s, you can find them now for $330 or thereabouts, three, $330 to $350. It's kind of funny that their price is dropping when there's no competition. There's a couple of reasons why that could be, but we'll go into that into, in the next video. Well, alrighty, guys, I just kind of wanted to give you a little insight. Hopefully that chart helps you out. You know, that kind of puts things in perspective that NVIDIA has only had technological advantage uh, pretty much since Maxwell. Pre-Maxwell, they were pretty much behind the whole time. Yes, they had a stronger GPU, you know, they had the top tier performance, but their GPUs were so much larger, clearly ATI and AMD had the technological advantage there because they were able to build a much smaller GPU that could compete. Now, what this means to you guys is that those companies clearly were more technologically advanced and if they wanted to, could build a larger GPU and could have competed. Now, what happened is, is by the time that Maxwell came out, the option of just building a larger GPU, aka the Fury, it didn't work because the technology there was now inferior to what NVIDIA had. So this is the reason why Vega is such a big deal to people is because ATI and AMD have technically been the leaders in technology. NVIDIA has generally not been, with a few exceptions, of course. I mean, there's a couple generations there that NVIDIA really kind of got it right. But for the most part, this is kind of how things have been since the 2000s, early 2000s. So for many, when you see Vega, we're, we're kind of hoping that this is going to be the return to form. And in all honesty, it kind of does seem to be that way. But we will see shortly. I'm going to go ahead and talk more about that in the next video. But for now, I'm going to get out of here, guys. If you like this kind of video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And I will catch you in the next video.